Hey, it's Mark Whittle to get a land geek with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable podcast, we have all the usual suspects. We got the Zen Master, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? I'm great, Mark. Thank you. Good to see you. We've got your partner in crime and nightcap, dude buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are things? Mark, I'm great. It's good to see you. We've got Taria putting in the reps, Harris. Taria, how are things in Atlanta? I'm well, Mark. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. We've got Eric the Technician Peterson. Eric, listen to any good country music today? <laughs> uh, I'm sure I did. Uh, nothing, nothing comes to mind immediately, but uh, I've always got music playing in the background here. But um, happy to be here today. Good to I see just, you. I just, uh, I just discovered the Zach Brown Band. Have you heard about those guys? Sure. Yeah. Uh, Never heard of them, but they're good. Yeah. No. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are things? I'm doing well. Thanks. Good to see you. Last but not least, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are things? They're great. How are you? A pulse is still normal. Respiration's fine. Uh, I can't complain. I, I will say that, uh, you know, the cold exposure, the cold therapy, the, the cold plunges that Mike Zeno has inspired me to go forward and do, it could be a life changer, but I don't want to talk about that. You know what I want to talk about? Man. What's that? The Zach Brown band? Besides, well, we can talk about that later too. I don't know that much about them. I want to talk about land ethics, land ethics, something that we don't talk a lot about. And there are some issues when you're dealing with a seller or uh, you're, the, you're selling and you're marketing. What are some best practices and what are some stories that we, we might have uh, as examples of, oh, this is not cool or, you know, and maybe argue a little bit about it. So I know we've talked about, you know, stealing pictures before in the past, but this is just a general land ethics question. And I know he loves going first. So we'll talk with the Zen master, Mike Zeno. Mike, yeah. what, what are, what is an example of, of a land ethic that was violated? You're like, oh, that's, that's not cool. Land ethic that was violated. Um, well, let me start talking to see if one pops up because I was thinking more general when we started talking about this topic. And you know, or, I think or just it, general, just yeah. generally speaking. Ethically speaking, I think what's important is that we honor our promises. I think that's something that I find uh, really important. Um, on on the buying and the selling side, you know, uh, whether we're may have an agreement to buy a property with somebody, um, you know. We follow through with what we say, you know, if something comes up that changes what, what has to happen, we're very truthful and, and transparent with them. Uh, that's, you know, whether it's buying or selling. So I think that's the first thing that comes to my mind, Mark, is that, you know, I want to honor my promises uh, to the people that we're working with. Um, I think that's really important. I don't know if I have a concrete example. It's just, it's just, a, it's well, a I mean, I could think of an example where you, you make an offer of, yep. let's say $3,000 due diligence right. comes back. And you find some issues in due diligence. Yes. And you say, hey, based on this due diligence now, I know I said $3,000, but really the most I can offer now is $2,200. Yeah. But as long as you stick to $2,200, you like to come back and be like, oh, I really I meant $1,800. Right? Right. Well, you're, you're giving them a concrete reason. You know, listen, there's something that we, I, that could happen, Mark. We mail somebody, say, a couple thousand dollars for an offer and they, they respond back and at that by the time between the time we've mailed out and maybe we've acquired a few properties we've realized that we maybe we overshot we we offered too much based on you know the market and what we've been selling them for and i think we're just very transparent with people say listen this is uh we've we've had some experience in the area um i understand i mailed you that two thousand dollar offer and but that being said uh we really have to make sure that we buy these things right because you know that's our business model we're going to resell these and that's the other thing, Mark. I'm very transparent. It used to concern me if somebody would say, 
what are you going to do with this property? I mean, I didn't feel like saying make a whole bunch of money. That didn't sound right. But uh, uh, I, I realized that if I was very truthful and said, well, we help people who want to own property, but don't have all the money or don't have great credit. And we allow them to own it on an easy monthly payment. Uh, we take monthly payments, sometimes as low as $100. In fact, and I would say this when I was doing the intake, I don't anymore, but um, you know, you could do this. If you want to make more money, you could. And they'd always say the same thing. No, that's that's too complicated. Uh, that, that's not, no, 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 no. But, but that transparency is, you know, even telling them, yeah, we are going to make some money, but we're going to do it in a way that's assisting other people. And a lot of the people selling really enjoyed that, Mark. They were like, wow, that's really nice of you. Okay, great. And they, and they, it kind of, it, uh, kind of made them happy to sell to us. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Um, you know, and we're not doing anything any differently than say, when you go to, sell your, let's say your, I mean, I'm, everyone on this call probably has a, a Mac, I think. Scott, Tyler. even I have a Mac. Yeah. It's not included maybe, but uh, your Mac becomes a little older and right. yeah, you could sell it yourself very easily, but it's really easy just to trade it in and get a credit with one of these right. companies and they'll recycle it for you. They'll wipe it for you. We're kind of doing this. So something, you know, very similar. We're making it easier for them to sell. Right. In, in exchange, we're going to make a, a profit. Um, you know, and as you know, some people might say an obscene profit, but that's in, that's just the way it is in our market because this stuff is not easy to do and it's a inefficient market. So, yeah. I also could think of something as well, Mark, that might be sort of relevant here. I think we've talked about this briefly on some of the podcasts. Like we had a property we were selling. Um, and we acquired the property for four thousand dollars, right? But the, the real market value of the property was like fifteen thousand. And somebody was buying from us. They really wanted the property, but they said, "Well, we know what you bought it for. We could see because you know if someone wants to see a copy of a deed, I'll send it to them. I'm not I'm not worried about what we bought it for. I mean, and they're like, oh, so we want to pay you eight thousand dollars. And you know, and the girls that do the sales were asking me what should we say. I say, just tell them the truth. It does what we paid. You know, we put a lot of effort into buying these properties. A lot of like costs that aren't seen on, you know, when you look at that number, but that being said, it's like, if, you know, if I bought Bitcoin for $10, right. And it's worth 50,000, I mean, I'm going to sell it to you for 20. I mean, it's just, that's the market value of the property. And um, so we, we, you know, we're open to realistic offers, but you can't base it on what we bought it for. That really has no relevance here. So, yeah. I mean, that, to take the transparency there, I still think that's ethical that we're selling it at the, at the, at the market price or, or, or whatnot. Yeah, I mean, I don't go to Nordstrom and look at the shirt and be like, you know what, you made, this was manufactured in China, it cost you about a buck. <laughs> I'll offer you two fifty. No, but you do love right. the for sale rack. I know I like those. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Every, yeah, everybody, everybody likes the deal. <laughs> but let's let's move on to Dude Buddy, the nightcap OG Scott Bossman. <clears throat> so I can think of a, f a few examples on the buy side and the sell side, but but what I think it really comes down to is it's the golden rule. Like I want to be, you know, I want to be treated. Um, uh, how I'm going to treat others, right? And um, it, it comes down to fairness. It comes down to what's right and wrong. It uh, comes down to having a, a meaningful connection with people on the buy and the sell side. Every once in a while, you're going to come across somebody on the buy side that does not align with your values. Well, I don't have a problem then not buying from the, that person. Uh, every once in a while, you're going to have somebody on the, uh, you know, when you're selling, the people do not align with your values. Uh, and, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example. Last week, uh, a lady went to my website, bought a property site unseen and never spoke with me. We went through the entire process, signed all the paperwork. Uh, the next day, she's blowing up my phone uh, because uh, she she uh, read into the, the CC&Rs a little bit more and decided it's not the property for her. Well, instead of giving me a little bit of time and letting me abide by the 90 day money back guarantee that is shown right in the contract and on my website and everything else, she calls the Better Business Bureau or she writes the Better Business Bureau and files a complaint against my business. Doesn't give me more than an hour uh, to respond to her multiple emails, her multiple texts and that type of thing. Um, that kills me, right? Like. Uh, I'm, I'm a stand-up person. I'm going to treat you well. All you have to do is contact me. Uh, and and I, I didn't get an apology for it either. So, um, you know, that, that stung. And, and uh, that was, a, you know, an example on, on the sell side where, 
uh, I felt like uh, I wasn't treated right. Um, yet she got all her money back. <laughs> so, no, you know, no issues on her side. But, but it really just comes down to fairness on both sides of the deal. And, you know, I, I'm going to treat people how I want to be treated. I, I love that, the golden rule. Um, it's, it's such a good reminder. Uh, mm-hmm. Taria putting in the reps Harris. Little pressure now. Like we've had so many ethical I examples. <laughs> I know. Well, thoughts? mine is going to be a little bit different because it was actually us who did something a little unethical. Um, so we hired our first VA years and years ago, and she's a great ad writer. And so she started writing our ads and she was also posting them. And so a, a day or so after, you know, she had started, we got an email from a very angry land investor uh, because that person's ad had been completely plagiarized. I mean, almost verbatim, except for our land details. Um, and it wasn't obviously our fault, but that was still a reflection of us. And it's completely unethical to steal someone's ad and post it. And not only did she steal it and post it, she stole it and posted it in the Land Geek group. So that was a huge, and we obviously apologized profusely to uh, the couple that we had stolen their ad from, and they understood after you know a conversation, but they were not happy, and, and I understood. But it, it wasn't. We couldn't just say, "Well, it was her." You know, we hired her, so we had to kind of take the brunt of that. But you know, plagiarizing people's information, pictures. We talked about that, but. Anything that does not belong to you, you can't turn around and reuse. So that was on us. Um, and we, we, of course, fired that VA. Yeah, I, I remember years ago, Eric had a coaching client. And the coaching client just completely plagiarized his entire website. And not only do I remember thinking, this is so wrong. I remember thinking, what's wrong with my website? <laughs> It wasn't plagiarizable. So, you know, I had to go and I had to get a web developer. I'm like, I want this thing to be plagiarizable, <laughs> just like Eric's. Like, and so, but, it, you know, it's just, you know, but it's true. Like, that's that's a, a poor land ethic. Uh, Eric, since we're talking about ethics, what, what, I mean, I just, by the way, I just stole your thunder. You're probably going to say, maybe, maybe don't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Take my beautiful website, my beautiful graphic uh, designs. Right, right. Well, just a comment on that. You know, I think that unfortunately in, in today's age, you know, information is abundant, right? And it's it's readily available. And it's so easy for, you know, ourselves or people that we employ to just go out there and take stuff, right? Because there's so much out there. What's the chance of, of someone finding out that you borrowed their content, right? Um, but man, that is just like Taria got done saying. I mean, that's it's a terrible thing to be doing. Um, you're you're essentially stealing from somebody. Somebody you know paid for that work to be done, or they spent their own time to to create whatever that thing is, and um, you know certainly not an ethical decision to to be going out and doing that in in any business you know not just selling land but i mean that happens all the time across so many industries so um you know i as i was thinking about this um uh, kind of along the the same theme that that has has been brought up so far but i think you know not only keeping your word right and, and, and doing what you say you're going to do whether that's you physically said it or you've communicated it on your website or in emails, what have you. But I think there's also a responsibility as, as a land seller that you're transparent with your buyers about those properties. So if you know something about the property um, that would be important to someone that's buying it, just like it was important to you when you bought it, you need to make sure that we're, we're translating and, and you know passing that information along. So uh, what could I give it as, as an example? Well, maybe we've got property that's in a flood zone. Maybe we've got property that's on the side of a mountain or any number of different characteristics, right? And 
you know, like Scott was saying earlier, someone comes along to your website or to some other platform and they just, they kind of buy the property uh, sight unseen without any communication directly with us. So we haven't had the chance to like vet them out and say, hey, are you aware of this? Are you aware of that on this property? Not that we don't want to sell it, but we do want to be forthright with important details because what if someone's intention is, uh, you know, they want to build a house and this property's on the side of a mountain. Not to say you can't build a house, but there are implications that go with that. Right. So, so I think just, just using your head and like thinking through things and, and just being honest with people, it, it's not, it's not going to turn everybody away. And I think that's maybe the fear is like, Hey, if I tell them this is in a flood zone or if this, like, no, then I'm going to lose the sale. But that's not always the case. Sometimes it might be, but um, if you don't communicate it up front, it's likely to come back and bite you later. I mean, just in Scott's example, we, we heard that, right? Um, that wasn't even necessarily something that was, um, I don't know how I want to word that, like a detractor on the property. I mean, that's just like part of whatever subdivision or wherever that property was. But um, that's that's what comes to mind for me. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, back in the day, I had a, a family call me and they wanted this parcel 30 miles from like the nearest hospital on a dirt road. And they wanted to move out there. I'm like, mm, probably not a good idea. And this is why, like literally like talking them out of it because I knew it would just be dangerous for them to be out there. And I said, look, if you want to invest in it, that's a different story. But if you are really going to move out there in good conscience, I, I can't sell you this property. I won't sell you this property. And sure enough, I mean, I know they ended up buying something from, from us, you know, uh, it's either some other point in time that was different or more suitable, but yeah, I mean, when you when you are that honest, it does build trust. You might lose a short term sale, but play the long game, and and treat every customer as if it's not just them you're dealing with. You're dealing with their entire network of people as well, and at some point in time, it's it's going to come back to you tenfold uh, by having that that really solid moral compass. And then kind of getting point to like the point of keeping your word. I think you should keep your word on all of it, even on stuff that seems that is a negative. So for example, if my word is, you're going to sign a land sale contract, a promissory note, and a purchase sale agreement, they all say the same thing. If you're late, I'm still keeping my word. These are the terms. You don't get to pause your payment. You don't get to be late with your payment. There's consequences of those things. Like we made an agreement. I'm going to keep my word. I'm not because if I if I go back on my word now I'm training my own customer base. Oh well, he doesn't keep his word. So it, it can go even into something that says, "Oh, it looks like you're being, you know, too rigid with the terms." Well, no, that we're just keeping our word. What do you think, Tate? I think it's great. I mean, I think you got to have ethics. You got to have a strong moral compass in, in everything that you do. I mean, one of the things that we say frequently and often is, "We're not in the convincing business." I don't need to convince you to sell me your property. I don't need to convince you to buy this property. And we want to work with people who understand what they're doing, both on the buy and sell side of the business. We're happy to explain. But at the end of the day, I don't, I don't want to be seen as a predatory, right? I don't want to be seen as somebody who's out there stealing your property from out from under you. That's not our aim. That's not our objective. Like Mike says, I'm solving one person's problem and then solving a problem for another person, right? On the front end, back end, I am a problem solver. Um, and I sleep well at night. And an example of this is recently we had a bit of cash sale. Um, and this was a big purchase. It was a, it was a gentleman, uh, a younger gentleman, and he is buying a property on the other side of the country from him. And he has ambitions with this property. And, you know, he calls us up and says, I want to buy cash today. And we were very hesitant to work with him because we weren't sure that it was going to be good for him. But uh, after doing some research and explaining how things are going to work and everything else, he decided to proceed with it. And, you know, we highlighted everything that we could to inform him of this property. He still made his own decision and we're hopeful that um, everything works out the way he wants it. Um, but 
you know, when it comes to the land business, be a good person, right? Don't operate in the shadows. Own your mistakes. You will make plenty of them, right? You're going to make advertising mistakes. You're going to make mistakes on the collection side of things. You're going to double charge somebody. You're going to accidentally sell a property twice. Own them. You know, be a man or be a woman and own your mistakes. Say sorry and come up with a solution. That's what I'd say. You know, own those mistakes and and correct them. Yeah, absolutely. And you learn from them. Right. Last but not least, Scott Todd. I like Tate's advice. Just say you're sorry. Own up to it. Like that's 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 pretty smart, Tate. Like seriously. Uh, in any problem, right? Like that's just the thing. But you know what? What's funny, Mark, is that um, in flight school, one of the questions I ask is, "What's the first thing?" It kind of mirrors your question from boot camp. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of salesperson? And most people think of the, I hate to say the slimy, sleazy, I'll leave out certain types of uh, work that people always put up there. Yeah, they they think about this whole thing uh, in a negative way, sales or salespeople in a negative way, um, because that's not what they wanna be. But then then you come to an ethical dilemma. What's the ethical dilemma? Well, you know, you really, really wanna make a sale. Like you got this property, maybe it's your first sale, maybe it's your 10th sale. Like you got this property, heck, maybe you think that thing's never gonna sell, right? Like maybe you've talked that into your head, like this thing's never gonna sell. So you get a, you get a lead and you're like, oh man, I hope they don't find out X, whatever it is that you know. You know, maybe you know that it's landlocked. Like, I, I kid you not, like I was looking at a property yesterday for the, the Land Moto live stream and I actually had to reject it. I had to reject it because one is landlocked. It's like a swamp land. I looked at it, I'm like, that is not uh, a property that I even want to tell someone to go look at uh, on a live stream. So I nixed the property and I sent the, the, the person saying that. So like, you have to own up to it. Uh, as Tate said, but you also need to really understand or disclose what you know, right? Like the more you disclose, um, and the the thing is like the prices of the properties are, that all those flaws are should be built into your pricing, right? Like you didn't, hopefully you didn't buy this property that's a swampland for top dollar. I mean, hopefully you kind of understood, like you look at the picture, you're like, there's no road to that thing. Heck, it might be all underwater, then hopefully you got it for a very, very low price. But if you know that, then you should disclose it instead of letting somebody think that they have this nice, beautiful, buildable lot on a on a you know major waterway, only to find out that they can't even get to the land unless they, I don't know, parachute it in there. So that's not a very good um, you know, approach either. So disclose what you want, uh, want uh, know, be honest about it. And look, you know, no property is perfect. They all have flaws, but I'll tell you what, somebody will want even that property that turns out to be a swamp. Somebody on this planet will want it. And your job now becomes to find the person that wants that property. You might not get the price that you want though. So just be honest about, you know, the properties about what you know, and the right person will in fact come along. It's just the way that it is. Yeah. So, so speaking of, of keeping your word and doing that and being transparent, um, I think it's interesting to talk about like fluid market dynamics. So let's say that Mike has a wholesale property that he's offering at this price. Let's say it's the wholesale price is $2,500. I raise my hand and say, Mike, I'm going to buy it at $2,500. But Tate raises his hand and says, Mike, I'll buy it at $2,700. Cherie raises her hand and says, no, you know, Mike, I'll buy it at $2,900. Bossman's like, no, there's $3,000. Eric's like $3,200. Scott Todd, of course, would probably come in at like $1,200. But that's a different whole thing. It's fluid market dynamics. And what is Mike to do? He's given one price. The market is saying, we'll buy it at this price. Scott Todd, what do you, what's your, what are your thoughts on that? You know, I think that, um, I don't think that you should, I mean, I'll look. If, if Mike's already agreed to me at 2,500. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should he no, be taking like, more bids at that point? N- no, like, if if I'm talking to to somebody and they say, hey, listen, I'm talking to this guy, Mike, and uh, I've already uh, agreed to sell my property. And I might just say, hey, that's kind of cool. How much you selling the property for? If you don't mind me asking, well, I got twenty five hundred dollars. It that's okay. Like to me, that's okay. It's just gathering data, and they might say it's none of your business. Okay, I asked anyway. However, if I then say, Mike is paying twenty five hundred dollars, oh, I'll offer you 
three thousand dollars. That's that's wrong, right? Like the the guy now you're now you are uh, purposely, you know, uh, you, you're entering into or trying to get someone to breach an agreement that they have with with Mike over here, and that's not cool, right? Like that's not cool to do either because. You know, there should be this honor, like, hey, listen, thanks for letting me know. If it doesn't work out, I might be interested. If it doesn't work out, let me know. I might be interested. That's an okay to part. But then to go in and try to snake it from from Mike, that's not cool. And you know what? It's funny that you mentioned that because there was a guy that Mike was talking to one day. Like there was a guy that uh, Mike was talking to about selling his land or, you know, the guy was going to sell his land to Mike. And the weird thing about that whole thing was that the guy had bought the property from me. And so then he's talking to Mike and he's like, hey, listen, Mike, uh, Mike, I, I forgot, Mike, it was like, I don't know, $4,000, something like that. So Mike's like, hey, listen, I'll give you $4,000 for the property. The guy's like, yeah, okay, no problem. The guy calls me and says, hey, Scott, I want to sell the land. And I got some other guy that offered me like $4,000 for the property. And But I, I bought it from you. I want to sell it back to you. Would you give me four thousand? And I'm like, well, who's the guy? He's like, oh, his name's Mike Zano. I that's not made up. It's a true story. So I said, I'm like, oh, Mike, absolutely. No, I didn't do that. I'm like, oh, well, okay. I said, I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you. So I called Mike, and I'm like, Mike, listen, this guy you're talking to about buying his land, he bought it from me. And Mike's like, yeah, I saw that. I saw that he bought it from you. I'm like, he just called me out of the blue. I would have no other way of knowing this. It's not like I snaked the deal from him. I'm like, and he's asking me if I'd like to buy it. I would like to buy it back from him. I have this relationship with him. Are you cool with that? And I was like, yeah, no problem. Don't worry. Don't worry, Scott. I'll put a wig on and make fun of you later on. But that said, you know, I was open and honest about it. And I think that's the difference, right? Like I can work with Mike and I can work with anybody else and, and do things like that that come up to me. But it's really about a courtesy to Mike. Like I, I felt like I needed to tell Mike like what I was doing because the worst thing to do would be for Mike to find out. No, Scott, Scott, I sold it to Scott. Then Mike's thinking all negative thoughts of me as opposed to, hey, listen, if it's going to upset you, you can have it. I'll just tell the guy no, but I would like it back, and I did want it back. However, like that's the way I think that you should approach it. It's like everybody. It's a small. It's a small little universe here. So if you know something and you're trying to be wise guy about it. I mean, and I actually had somebody, it's funny that you mentioned that too, Mark, because I had a guy that went into an area and he did just that. He like found out that I, I was buying this property and he offered them like a thousand dollars more than what I was offering for this property. They sold it to him and he comes back to me and says, I'll sell it to you for another thousand dollars. And if you don't buy it from me, then I'm going to sell it to somebody else. And then you're going to, I'm going to create more competition for you. She's like blackmailing me. And I'm like, I'm not playing your game. Move along. So like people can get mean and nasty about some things too. And that's not cool. Be cool. Yeah. Did, did I tell you the story about the guy that uh, bought property, contacted all the neighbors and said, if you, if you don't buy this property from me at this price, I'm going to erect a huge pink fence and I'm going to ruin all your views. And, you know, wow. so he was like basically extorting the neighbors and I guess it worked enough times for him that he kept doing it. And finally, like the DA got involved and, um, you know, he was very lucky that it wasn't like, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, what's that show? Uh, uh, Yellowstone, like, you know, the, like he didn't, you know, talk, talk to the Yellowstone guys, like, yeah, I'm going to wreck a, a, give you a ride to the train. I'll give you a ride to the train. Sure. <laughs> Not a problem. We'll do that deal. So uh, that's, you know, crazy things. Well, I thought this is a good, a good topic. And uh, we're at that point in the podcast now where we're going to put someone on the spot and ask them for their tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actual for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Before we do that, though, this podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Start building that passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, and rodents. Go up that mountain of land investing with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. He's going to take you there quickly, safely, efficiently. Oh, yeah. And that Flight School tuition ain't going to cost you nothing. Guaranteed, you're going to make it all back 180 days or less. All you have to do is show us your work. Schedule a call 
Just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, thelandgeek.com forward slash training. So tip of the week. I want to make a clarification, Mark. Yes. It was the opposite of a wig. It was the opposite of a wig. I was going to point that out too. It, it, it was a bald a cap. It was not a wig. It was, it was a wig. wig with no hair. <laughs> Technically, it is a wig. It was the opposite it's of a wig. It's not called a wig. No. Okay, it's a bald cap. There, that's, that's right. <laughs> All which right. Is, which, which is bringing back very, very bad memories, Mike. All right. I've, I've, you know, if no one's going to come up with the tip of the week, I've got a book. Should I just give it? Great. Of course you Share should. Yes. Dr. Min, Dr. Benjamin Hardy, Dan Sullivan, another collaboration. If you've read or listened to Who Not How, they came up with another book, which is just as fantastic, called The Gap and The Game. And Scott Bossman. No, 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 no. I gave that no. tip like uh, two months no, ago. No, no, no. You did? Bossman already gave that one. That, <laughs> come on, man. But it just kind of came into my, count? it kind of came into my world. Count? Hey, Mark, how is this any different than the book that Scott Bossman gave by the same authors in the same title? Why do you like this one better than the one that, that uh, Bossman gave? I don't. Okay. I don't. <laughs> He's frantically looking Hold on. on his bookshelf right Hold now. On. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Don't All be right. surprised if he pulls out this fantastic book called Dirt Rich. You watch. <laughs> I, I, I already did my shameless plug with Flight School. Okay. I read this, but did I talk about Humankind? We're going to give it to you. Go ahead. Okay. So Humankind is an interesting book on, on basically the idea that humans are basically really good people and that we evolved not survival of the fittest, survival of the friendliest and the, or the collaborative species. So you could take, um, let's say, Homo sapien versus Neanderthal. Well, Neanderthal was way stronger and way smarter than Homo sapien. We could actually argue in history that like, they were like a genius, right? So the Neanderthal would create the fishing rod but the Homo sapien would look at the, the fishing rod and say, oh my God, that's genius. And would learn how to use the fishing rod and start telling their friends and their tribe, here's how you can catch fish in a more efficient way. And then it's the person that was, you know, giving that value would actually, you know, because of reciprocation, all those things, like those genes would kind of pass on and on and on. So we, we, we evolved this survival of the friendliest. There, obviously, if you look at history, we do have some flaws in our software uh, and we can be very, you know, very cruel to each other, but we're typically not, we're, we're typically, it's usually like outsiders. So there's, you know, once you become aware of like some of these flaws that we have, so he kind of makes these arguments, he goes, kind of goes through and looks at some of these um, famous studies, like the Stanford Milgram study and kind of debunks it. Uh, if you remember the, the thing about New York, but this woman is getting stabbed and there's like 50 New Yorkers watching it and no one calls the police. And that became like a famous case. He kind of debunks all that. Humankind is a very interesting book. And it also relates to ethics and our topic. So that is the tip of the week. Tate, what do you think? A resource, a tip, a tool, a trait that will help you as a land investor progress it. I think this is good. Right, right. I mean, think perhaps about it. you're you're helpful to somebody in the Lanky community. You're you're big, you're survival of the friendliest. I think that if you need a real tip of the week, everybody just re-listen to this podcast on ethics because there was some knowledge and there were some solid nuggets in there. In addition to the book Humankind from Mark Podolsky. Well, I, I I appreciate that. I, I do want to remind the listeners that the only way that Tate is going to be as kind to me on the next podcast is if you do us three little favors, follow, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review, support at thelangeekgut.com, and we're going to send you for free a signed copy of Dirt Rich. So please do it. All right, we ready to do this? One, two, three. Let, let, let freedom, freedom, freedom ring. Ring, ring. Not bad. Not bad. Thanks, everybody. 
Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.